Good evening. Welcome to News Center 9 at 5. I'm Barbara Goche. Jason is all. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday night. Our top story one year ago today, a mother and her three babies were murdered in a South Columbus apartment home. Within hours, police held the suspect in custody. The boyfriend and father to the children, Trevane Brandon Jackson, charged with four counts of murder. Five months later, a development shook both families. Jackson died in the Muskogee County Jail, leaving friends and family looking for answers. Today, News at 09, Samantha Servant revisits one of the most horrific crimes in Fountain City history with new information and insight that might help explain why this tragedy happened in the first place. Samantha, you spent months looking through records and police video. Tell us more about what you've learned. Barbara, police and community members alike know the quadruple murder of Jerrica Spellman and her three young children, King, Christian, and Kensley, is one of the most horrendic, horrendous things to ever happen here. Diving through hundreds of documents, the answers to many questions become a little more clear. Jerrica Spellman and Trevane Brandon Jackson spent five years together before a stabbing spree killed Jerrica and their three children and sent Brandon to jail. Family members say there was an ongoing custody dispute for the children. Three-year-old King, one-year-old Kinsley, and one-month-old Christian, causing issues within their Elizabeth Canty apartment home. Records show both mom and dad had to attend hands-off classes for documented assaults against each other. Family members say Spellman wanted to take the girls and move to her hometown of Jessup, Georgia. July 17, 2019, Jackson sent this text message to a group chat of family members saying, quote, I love y'all. This text coming across around the time police say the murders happened. Ma'am, just please get a police officer here. My nephew showed up at my house. He scratched up and beat all up. And my son and them just went to his house, and they said that everybody in the house is dead. Recorded interviews and written reports indicate Jackson spoke with homicide detectives on several occasions without an attorney. He tells lead detective Matt Sittler, Spellman started the fight that Wednesday afternoon saying she grabbed two knives from the kitchen. During a recorded confession, Jackson explains after stabbing Spellman, he looked at the kids, told them he loved them, and killed them all because he knew their mother was dying and he was heading for jail. I did, okay? I killed all of them. I did. I did. I killed them all. I wasn't thinking clearly with myself, but I, and I, and not going on through my head, I did. I did. I did. I didn't want nobody to have my kids. Detectives worked night and day preparing a case to present to a jury, but according to case reports, there would never be a trial. Jackson told detectives he wanted to make a plea deal to expedite the case, meaning he would plead guilty to spare family the turmoil of a trial. But less than six months later, they did go in and found Mr. Jackson hanging. Officials say Jackson died by suicide December 30th, 2019, ending the investigation. Before his death, Jackson told detectives if he could do July 17th, 2019 all over again, he would have walked away the moment the argument began. Unfortunately, it's too late to undo what's already been done. Barbara, hopefully one year later, these families are finding some peace and knowing some of the reasons behind their terrible losses. Oh, Samantha, that video the, it is just chilling. I know we've reported several times there were concerns from family members that Jackson might commit suicide in jail, right? Yeah, that's right. Jackson told police he tried to commit suicide at least three times in the past. Once when his father died in 2014 and twice the day of the murders. Muskogee County Sheriff Donna Tompkins says Jackson was on suicide watch initially when he came into the jail, taken off just a week later. It's just heartbreaking all the way around. Samantha, thank you so much for the uh, update.